Hello world! Today we're going on the search for a wild hot spring in the prefecture of Fukushima. We'll jump in and test the waters, check out how the town transports it to its onsens, then jump in those onsens as well. We'll see onsens by the river, milky white onsen water with little caves, then visit another onsen town and yet another cave, before finally going to the most scenic and in the nature onsen I've ever been to. Well, not counting the wild one I first showed you. So Japan is a volcanic country. It's on the Pacific Ring of Fire after all. I can't tell you how many volcanoes there are in Japan, since my searches always pull up different numbers. But it's safe to say there's a lot. Japan has among the most volcanoes in the world. I've had the pleasure to visit a few. More to the point, with the volcanic activity comes hot springs, or as they're called in Japan, onsens. After searching online, I can't seem to find a country that has so many onsens as well as an onsen culture quite like Japan. Some articles will state that Japan has 25,000 onsens, while others say 3,000. The discrepancy might lie in the fact that a single hot spring source can feed multiple onsens. Whatever the true number is, I've only visited a fraction, with at least 50 under my belt but less than 100. I've soaked in some gorgeous onsens, but I've never been to one out in the wild. Today I've set out to remedy that. This road is really bumpy, man. It's such a big boy van like this. Whoa. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared. It's okay, about John. This. It's okay, John. Whoa. Whoa. What was that? Oh, so there are some people here. Look, we're not the only people. Oh, yeah. After traveling up a bumpy gravel road, a bit of hiking is necessary. So let's get started. By the way, this guy pretending to point to where we're going is John Dobb from Only in Japan. He's making his own video about our trip together. So if you want to see these kinds of antics, then check his one out. What's going on, John? Uh, you're not filming this, are you? <laughs> uh, ah. Wild. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Let's see your butt. Oh, yeah, you got to... Skid mark. <laughs> oh man, skid. I had quickly chatted with that guy and his friend, and they said that the water was great, so it was all looking good. I asked for the best place to take a dip, and he said to find the pool to the right of the bridge. There were actually several bridges, so I started climbing up the little hot spring river, searching for the ideal place. Over here, this is a beautiful calm pool. I think this is the spot. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. 
I think now's the best time to put a big warning out there. There are literally signs. The Nakano Sawa Onsen Association owns the land and you are not supposed to enter past a certain point without a guide from their association. The main reason is because there have been deaths caused by the hydrogen sulfide gases emitted from the area. That being said, they've started up an extreme onsen guided tour with a local guide that will show you around and make sure that you stay safe. Okay, now to get in. This is your dream? This is my dream. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hot? It's great. This is so perfect, the temperature. It's unreal. It really is. It's nice, right? Like, this is what, 43? Yeah. Oh my goodness, John. Whoa! This is located at the foot of Mount Adatara, where it was discovered 380 years ago, and an onsen resort was located. There are several hiking trails that go through this area. At the Yubatake, which literally means hot water field, you'll find the source of the hot spring. In fact, this is the highest volume single source spring in Japan, with 13,400 liters per minute being discharged. The springs have a high acidity and are sulfur, which accounts for the rotten egg smell, which I know you can't smell through video, yet. But what you can tell is the yellow sulfur deposits everywhere around the area. The local onsen association channels the water through these wooden troughs. The sulfur is collected and even sold to visitors. At the source, the water is as high as 70 degrees Celsius or 158 degrees Fahrenheit. As the pipes transport the water, it does lose some heat, but it's still more than hot enough when it hits the onsens in town, where the temperature is maintained at about 40 to 43 degrees Celsius, depending on the bath. But the amazing thing to me, and it could have been purely a luck of timing and location thing, was that the pool I found, on the advice of the local hikers, was in the 42 to 45 degrees Celsius range, if my years of onsening have taught me anything. If you start going up the valley, you'll notice that the water suddenly becomes clear. That's because it's the river before the hot springs water mixes into it. Luckily, I had a drone with me, and flying up the valley, I discovered a waterfall and decided that I'd like to try it out. That was refreshing. Whew. All right, I did the cold and now it's time to warm up. Yeah, that's the, that's it right there. John, he missed out. I didn't miss out at all, man. John, you're missing out. <laughs> oh. If you want to soak in cold water, <laughs> you go right ahead. No, it, man, it was stay. so refreshing. Really? It was really? Yeah, it was really refreshing. So I, I think feel, you really missed out, John. I feel pretty refreshed here. It is, it's good. Believe what you want, but that dip in the water, which I'm guessing was in the 15 to 18 degrees Celsius range, was truly invigorating. So the cold water and the hot spring water mixes together, and that's how the pool I dipped into was not too hot, but not too cold. Kind of like a certain fairy tale, it was just right. Okay, time to go.
When you descend back down the mountain, you'll find yourself in Nakanosawa Onsen Town. That's where you can enjoy an onsen without needing to drive up dirt roads, hike up muddy trails, nor bathe naked in full view of admittedly few people. And actually thinking about it, I didn't need to be naked, but I also didn't not need to be naked. There's something to be said about enjoying nature au naturel. Despite sometimes being located in popular onsen areas, some deem these kinds of onsens hito are secret onsens. For all these onsens I'm about to show you, I received permission to film. Thanks to my wife for making the calls. And of course, thanks to the onsens for letting us in. Unfortunately for this one, I couldn't enter because I was still healing from a minor fall where I was able to protect my camera, but unfortunately not my legs. So I had John model the onsen life for me. The truth is that on these kinds of onsen shoots, you don't really get to enjoy the onsen as you're so busy filming. But we can try and pretend, can't we? Okay, okay, I think it's time to move on. Oh, by the way, another advantage of non-wild onsens is you get some nice amenities. At this second onsen, I was able to enter. I thought the little cave was so cool. And because filming for YouTube has its privileges, I was able to enter the woman's side as well. They had this really lovely single bath. All around the region there are many onsen towns, like this one, Takayu, which offers a free foot bath. Not to be outdone, a nearby onsen town, Tsuchiyu, not only has one foot bath, but two. It's super hot! It's a very scenic little onsen town. Once again, we had more onsens to hit up. This one was a bit more old school, where you washed off by dipping a bucket directly into the onsen water. This also had a bigger cave that was dug out by the owner. The last onsen we visited was the most in nature you can get, which required a lengthy climb down the wooden stairs. Sometimes onsens will only have certain angles that look good, but with this one, Everything looked great. You were really right there next to the river in a truly picturesque setting. At many onsens, you don't actually have to stay the night to enjoy. You can simply do higairi, or a day trip, and pay anywhere from 500 to perhaps 1,500 yen in extreme cases to enter. 
It's limited hours, as overnight guests have priority, but you can generally get access for a few hours in the middle of the day. However, with this place, you have to stay at the resort to enjoy this. But I can totally see why people pay a premium price to have this secluded experience. The thing that always amazes me about Japan is that it seems that no matter where I go, I can find so many exceptional places within such a small geographical region. The area around Mount Adatara did not disappoint and I now want to go back again with the family as there were so many places that I didn't get to visit or stay at long enough. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. My wife wanted to try her hand at a new type of food, Thai. So she went on Skillshare and found a cooking class about making three Thai curries from scratch by Renee Chan. Well, my wife ended up making two of those Thai curries, a vegetarian green curry and a chicken red curry. And the results were delicious. Mmm. But you can learn all sorts of new things on Skillshare. Previously, I had browsed their thousands of classes and learned how to draw. I think I made major improvements. With premium membership, you can get unlimited access to the classes, so you can take whichever ones fancy your interest. Whether you want to learn a new skill for fun or grow as a person, Skillshare's online learning community has something for you. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month, so it's hard to go wrong. And the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Thanks to John from Only in Japan for taking the trip with me and to Dream Drive for providing the wheels. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.